Well, hello, everyone. We are so excited to, to be with you tonight. Um, I am coming to you from a very unique location. Um, I'm actually in Leesburg. So Paul and I are a little bit separated tonight, um, but it's for a very good reason. Um, my daughter and her husband just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy and he just arrived home. So I am doing grandma duty but it couldn't keep me away from being with you this evening. Um, I wanna give a shout out and thank everyone for all of your support um, through actually this past year, uh, joining us for our concert series, um, enjoying the amazing musicians and performances and being so generous in your donations to support local musicians and national musicians um, during this past time. But tonight is a very special evening because tonight we're going to celebrate um, a very special organization, and that's Kip Pen Alley. So we are so thrilled to have Billy Jonas and Howard Levy here with us this evening. And we hope that as the evening progresses and you get ready to make your donations, you will be generous. Um, all of tonight's donations will actually go to Kip Pen Alley and support the work that we've been doing with children um, over the past 21 years, and especially during this past year with COVID. Um, it's been a huge, a huge shift for us, but it's been a, a very deep and heartfelt time for us to work with children um, during this period of time and transition. So enough said about all that. Let me introduce to you who we have with us tonight. It's so exciting. So I want everyone to say hi to Billy Jonas. Hi, can you hear me okay? Uh, oh, I can hear you perfect. So, you know, for those of you who may not know Billy Jonas, which I just don't think there's anybody that doesn't know him, um, just a couple things, you know, uh, some folks have called him witty and smart, but I really, really love the fact that uh, Peter Yarrow said, Billy Jonas is one of the most original moving and some simultaneously hilarious performers I have ever seen. And so I am so excited, Billy. What are you gonna do for us this evening? Well, first I'm gonna say thank you because I'm so grateful to be part of this event. And forgive me if I look in the wrong direction. I have my monitor over there and my camera over here. <laughs> um, so forgive me, I can see you all up there, but um, I'm going to say thank you for making this possible and thank you for the work you're doing. 2,700 songs with 65,000 kids that you all have facilitated and they're amazing songs. I'll be playing one of the Kid Pan Alley songs later. I'm going to start with, with a different song that's a fun way of getting everybody together. And this was invented when I lived in Chicago. And I remember going to the Green Mill to a, a poetry slam when those things were just starting and I was, I was trying to imagine how am I going to get everybody to sing along with me if they've never heard the song. And Howard, I bet you've been to the Green Mill before. It's an amazing oh. institution. Oh, yeah. And uh, this was back in the late 80s. And I, uh, I just, um, I came up with this idea that if I can get everybody to count on the downbeat, they, I'd say we'll get a critical mass of folks that can do that. You can all just say the word one. And you can mute yourselves and say it along with us because I think that's what Kid Pen Alley is all about. It's about creating a oneness with the entire world and seeing the foundation of that oneness in children and getting them to find their creative spirit so that they can fill the world with joy and wonder and creativity through music and uh, facilitate building oneness. So we all say one, one, that's your part, one, one, let me hear everybody say one, they'll stay on mute. 
yourself i hear some people counting a lot which is great but we want you on mute ready one day in a distant land one woman and one man one thing led to another one was a father one was a mother one day daughter and a son one year later another another one plus one plus one plus one makes one human race on the run one will run for the president she will run because he can't pay the rent run this covered operation Destination. One says, wait, it's just not fair. One plate full and one plate bare. One flop after another. One solution. Add them all together. One plus one plus one plus one makes one. One. Keep counting. One plus one plus one plus one makes one by one. The tribe scattered. One got thin and one got fatter. One got cake. One got the batter, one in the gutter, one up the ladder, one hangs with the bad, bad youth, one marches by the Luther's truth, one sings with the secret police, one goes trekking after Mother Teresa, one plays peekaboo with a baby girl, one plays checkers with an arsenal, up a mountain just to get air, one pops wheelies in a wheelchair, one likes Jesus, one likes judo, one Yogananda Muhammad the Buddha, says wait how do you pick a path, one solution, new, new math, in a cardboard box, one sleeping off a three-day drunk, one in a think tank thinking all that can be thunk, one in the garden with nothing but a stick, one is a cosmic potato, click, 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 one channel bambi, one channel bond, one channel people channel voices from beyond, one voice is what a great equation, solution with a million variations, one plus one, one, one plus one. is different. I'll say the ones and you say the opposite of me. One goes up, one goes down. One is square and one is. One will smile and one will frown. One is lost and one is found. One is hot and one is cold. One is young and one is old. One is silver, one is gold. One gets bought and one gets sold. One goes left and one goes right. One by day and one by night. One is dark and one is light. One is black and one is white. One says yes and one says no. One goes fast and one goes slow. One goes high, one goes low. One says stop and one says go. My gosh, Billy, that's amazing. That is so amazing. I love I, that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, the Green Mill got it. And Mark Smith, who was the host, he came up and said, that's amazing. You got everybody to, to find the downbeat, which you know, is an accomplishment, you know? <laughs> okay, so I have to ask a question. I mean, tell us about these, these uh, one looks like it's a water bottle. That's 
right now. Five gallon water bottle. This is five gallon water bottle number, uh, probably 43 in my career or so. <laughs> they, they break. This one has some duct tape on it, which gives it a particular timbre. It's got Mardi Gras beads inside. This frying pan here, I call this a Fussenklanger, and this frying pan came from Germany in 1932. I don't know, Dad, my dad's watching. Dad, when did Tana Frida bring this over from Germany? Like 1932 or 28 or something? Wow. And she brought it over and it's, every time I play it, literally, I think of her and I say a thank you to her for the joy she brought me, my great Aunt Frida, Tante Frida. And the Fussenklanger has a bell and a horn. And I put that together in my parents' living room in Hyde Park and they're watching tonight. Hi, Mom, hi, Dad. And. Uh, <laughs> This is a garbage can I found at Camp Shy up in Lake Delton, Wisconsin in 1995. And a little tykes chair upside down, skateboard from a flea market. Don't tell anybody it's a real symbol. <laughs> yeah. And these are vans that have been converted. I call them magic music moccasins. And so you say, of course you say, why do all that stuff? Well, it sounds good. It pushes the wonder button of kids all, of all ages, adults included. And it all stacks up like Russian... Uh, Mariushka dolls inside this barrel so it travels on an airplane. That's why. <laughs> that is so awesome. And I bet after after you have after kids have seen you, they go home and collect every trash can they can find in their home and start playing. And adults you know, and get too. their moms to Some people saw me and then there was this show on Broadway called Stomp. I don't know if there was a connection. Mm -hmm. you and oh yeah. <laughs> well, Bill, you're the only person I know who whose instrument costs less than Howard's harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, what a way to start off this evening. And I don't know about anybody else, but I was having a really hard time sitting still. So it's going to be quite a fun evening. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 my plan is working. Whoa. And so let's, let's make a shift up to Chicago and Howard, Howard. Hey. Are you there? Were you beating on things? Uh, I was trying my best not to. I loved what he did. It was fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I remember the Green Mill in the early days. Yeah, that neighborhood used to be very rough. You wouldn't even yeah. recognize it. Now it's all shishi, you know? Yeah. Um, I was one of the first people to play there. In, wow. In the uh, mid-80s. And uh, hopefully be able to play there again and when this, once this thing calms down, you know? Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, uh, want me to play something? I would love for you to play something, but then, <laughs> Allison, but then I, want you, I want you to tell us a story afterwards. Hi there. Hmm. Hello. What is your name? We have someone else online there with us. Hmm. All right, Howard, take it away for us. <laughs> okay. Are you going to introduce Howard there, Cheryl? Yeah. For any uh, Howard Levy, what can I say? Oh my gosh, Howard, when I met you, um, we were doing a little bit of touring and I remember you playing harmonica and piano at the same time. And, and you were just, you were like doing all of these, it just runs up and down the piano. And you were telling me how that relaxes you. <laughs> You're at the piano. And I just thought to myself, this man is, is so amazing. He's such a genius. Um, but the story I was going to ask you about, Howard, is what is the most memorable concert you played? Uh, I don't know. I have to go th back through my memory for the 2000 to pick from. You know, I, I have to say, one of the things that makes me feel really good is if someone comes up to me at the end of a concert and said, that was the best concert I've ever been to. Now, it doesn't mean that I played the best music that anyone ever played, but it just means, means that I made people feel really good. And so that makes me feel good, that, that people get carried away by the spirit of the music. You know? And so uh, that's my answer to that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what, what are you going to play for us, Howard? I'm not sure, uh, because that first one kind of blew my mind with one. <laughs> one, one. That's all I have in my mind now is one. So maybe I'll just start playing something off the top of my head, which means I'm going to try to, well, I'll, I'll leave these on. Let's see how they sound off the top of my head and uh, see if it evolves into something. How's that? Perfect. Maybe it'll be two. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, Howard. Oh, my gosh. Woo. It's so hard to find words. It's so, it's, first of all, it's so beautiful. It was so amazing. It just transports you and takes you to a different place. Now, you just, you just created all of that just right there, right? Well, I started out improvising, and then I, it morphed into Duke Ellington's tune in a sentimental mood. Okay. Which uh, you probably recognized. I had no idea I was going to play that at all. It was just <laughs> suggested to me by the, the world of music. You know, wow. And uh, oh I, my gosh, how? And you know, I'm lucky that my I've been able to keep my piano uh, pretty in tune too. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the great loves of my life. This Steinway sitting right here, and Paul, I know you can relate to that because you've got a beautiful one in your house too. Yes. Um, and so the between Steinway and Honer, I have two very German <laughs> instruments that I am playing here. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Wow. <laughs> That and oh my that, gosh, yeah, and that frying pan, you know. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So, Thanks. it's just, you know, I know that back in 1970, you you sort of revolutionized the your the harmonica technique by um, inventing a technique that allows you to play all twelve to all twelve notes. Yes. So, do you still play other harmonica or other tuned harmonicas or? Well, I mean, I use all 12 key harmonicas depending on, you know, how, uh, what the tune feels like it would sound best on, but I can play pretty much anything on any one of them, but it's like, you know, there's 12 instruments. It's like colors for a painter, you know, uh, yeah. sort of like that. And I'm going to play, that was on a G harmonica. That's the one I see the piano most directly in my mind. You see, I, when I'm playing this instrument, I'm actually seeing the piano keyboard in my head. And so oh. that's, that's how the two, I play them together. It's like one, one thing. So when I switch keys, it gets, it gets the connection is a little, a little less direct. You know, I can do it, but it's harder, you know, you know. Oh, Howard, I, I could listen to you all day, all night. It's, you just amaze me. It's astounding. And it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You know, folks, I mean, it just doesn't get much better than this. However, it's going to get better <laughs> because our next performer is someone very near and dear to me and now is officially called Grandpa. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my dear loved Paul, um, who is the founder and uh, artistic director for Kid Pan Alley. And as we go through tonight, um, if, if you've joined us before, you know that we offer a tip jar, but tonight's um, donations will go uh, towards uh, a, a fundraiser, a Giving Tuesday promotion that we are doing right now. It's called Give Local Piedmont. And all of your generous donations will um, go to help support songwriting and helping keep creativity alive for children. And so let me introduce the one and only Mr. Paul Reisler. Hi. Well, thanks, Cheryl. And I miss uh, you sitting next to me when we do these things. Uh, I know it's a little strange, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm coming up there tomorrow to see my new grandson, and I can't, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I remember when I uh, when we first met Howard uh, was back in the early '80s. Yeah, I'm mute. Here, Essie, keep yourself muted, honey. Uh, uh, and we first met Howard. Uh, there was a jam session. My band Trapezoid was playing, I think it was Winnipeg Folk Festival, and there was a jam session afterwards, and there was Howard. He only had one key harmonica with him. He was playing the piano and the harmonica on bebop tunes that were changing keys all over the place. And Lorraine and I uh, were just, didn't know what we were hearing, but Lorraine ran and got Bela Fleck and introduced Howard and Bela, and uh, that's when we met Howard also. And I've been very, very fortunate. Howard's played with us off and on over the years with Trapezoid and then in my band Thousand Questions and on about every record I've made uh, since we first met him because he just takes everything to a whole other universe when he plays. So anyway, uh, the first time I ever sang on stage, I was doing an in the round with uh, Issei Barnwell from Sweet Honey in the Rock and Kathy Matea. 
and I had never sung on stage, and I figured, well, if I do it now, it'll always be easier because they're two of the greatest singers there are. Well, I'm going to play an instrumental now, which takes a lot of uh, something to play after Howard Levy's played, but the rest of the evening will be so much easier after that. Uh, this is one, actually, that Howard played on, um, on uh, our Thousand Questions album. It's uh, called The White Edge of Winter, and it's followed by At Night the Roses Tango. And boy, do I wish Howard and I could play it together tonight. He may have to play it after I play it. I don't know. Anyway, here it is.
Beautiful, Paul. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I miss hearing you practice that. Usually I'm there at the house and um, the day of the concert, actually days before the concert, I'm um, listening to all your wonderful playing. Things so, talk to them. I will see you soon. So I want to take an opportunity to introduce to you our illustrious executive director, Jen Jacobson. Jen, Thank how you. are you this well, evening? I'm not, I'm not feeling so illustrious, but especially in the company of these musical geniuses we have tonight. Um, wow, Howard and Billy, just unbelievable. And we are so incredibly fortunate to have you here supporting Kid Pan Alley. Um, I think many of you know, but not all of you know that Kid Pan Alley was started by Paul um, 21 years ago, 21 plus, almost 22 years ago now. And um, Paul really realized in all of his um, songwriting career and after starting to work, do some work with kids that children make amazing songwriters. And he uh, figured out a way to come into a, a classroom of kids and write a really darn good song with them as co-writers and really have them understand what it means to put together lyrics and melody and rhythm and pitch and all the aspects of a, of a good song and to do it together as a group. Um, and, you know, he's been doing it and Cheryl joined along the way uh, for, for 21 plus years. There have been ups and downs, obviously, but nothing, I think I can speak for you, Paul, to say nothing compared to this year. This was a year. And in fact, Paul and Cheryl too, I think, were on stage um, down in Virginia when, uh, when actually during, at the beginning of the pandemic, when um, the governor decided that schools needed to be shut down that day in March, they were on stage about to do a, a concert uh, performance with um, some children as part of a school residency. And all of a sudden they're hearing the news, well, schools are closed. And many months, that's what we do. We write songs with children mostly and we have together what the heck are we going to do this we get you know paul we have to both paul longest no we need to keep writing with the kids they need it more than ever now they are separated from their friends they have uncertainty there are people getting sick they don't know what what's going to happen with their school with their lives this is when they need songwriting the most. And we said, we got to figure out a way to make this work, even though schools are closed. Come from Oops, Wyoming. excuse me. And um, so we did. We figured out how to write songs online. Um, Paul's been doing it um, with Cheryl, with a bunch of our other assistant songwriters, uh, with schools, with camps, with um, all kinds of uh, community arts organizations to keep the songs going through this crazy, crazy year. And in fact, one of our amazing teachers that we work with up in New Hampshire is on the, the Zoom right now, Pam Felber, you've been amazing. Um, and it's been working wonderfully. Of course, there are you know, certain things that are different than being together with the kids in the classroom, but it's been a lifesaver, I think, for a lot of kids who really felt like they were feeling so isolated. And as we all know, music is what can bring us together. Music connects and music heals, and that's what we're going to keep doing. And that's what all of you being here tonight can help us do um, by supporting Kid Pan Alley. And we have the link here for you. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to some of the folks who have already given, who are on this Zoom right now with us. Pam is an incredibly generous donator um, for, with many, for many of our concerts. So Pam Felber, thank you. Sam Simon, thank you. Elaine Alfano is on. Mara Beckerman is on. Um, and those are just the folks that are that I see that are here on the um, on the concert, but and gave even before the concert started. So please, if you can, chip in at the link. Um, we want to keep doing this. Um, schools are starting to open up, so we can do some of it in person. We can still do a lot of it online. We're just going to keep going. You know, as things open, now it's the time that children are processing what they've all been through. And just like all of us are, right? You know, life is getting back to quote normal maybe, but we have a lot that we've been through that we have to figure out and um, music can help us do that. And I think you're gonna hear a little bit later in the show, 
one or maybe two even of the songs that have been written about what the kids have gone through. They've written some songs about COVID and quarantine, not COVID specifically, but being separated and quarantine. And we're actually making an album of some of those songs. So you're going to hear uh, at least one of those a little bit later. So thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you to Billy and Howard for just being an incredible, uh, bringing your, your genius to us to help support Kid Pan Alley. And let's get on with the show. Um, thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to give a big shout out to all of the Kid Pan Alley staff that makes these programs, this concert series work. And so a big shout out to Ryan Benyo, who's there. You can wave to him. Yay, Ryan. He is, Ryan works very closely with Paul with all, not only the recordings and the mastering, but also helping schools with their sound checks and making sure all the technology is working. Because as you know, technology is our friend only when it works. <laughs> And also Ashley Cunningham. Ashley is always there with us behind the scenes. She's been working with Paul um, with some of the residencies and she provides just unfettered and tremendous support uh, to our organization. So they're with us every, every concert series. So I just wanted to say thank you to them. Okay, Billy, we're coming back to you, man. We need to move, we need to groove. So what have you got for us? Well, I've got something that is sort of mellow. <laughs> so we can oh, I'm sorry. Later. We can <laughs> okay, later. okay. Um, and, you know, that seemed like a segue, but I'm going to save my, the Kid Pan Alley song that I sang on, I'm going to save that for later. I just want to put this out, because this is a, an anthem I wrote, and it was commissioned, and I, I think it's, it's one of those little homeopathic remedy songs. You hear it, you put it in your mind, and it comes back in just the right moment. Did you put more love in the world today? More love on your way to the setting sun. There is only one measure when you can honestly say I put more love. Before I do the song, I'm going to do a little story for you. This was commissioned by a woman for her granddaughter's bat mitzvah. She said, my granddaughter, she's a very special girl, and I'd like you to maybe talk to her and think about who she is in the world. And for her bat mitzvah, she's doing a mitzvah project. She's doing a good deed project, tikkun olam, putting more goodness in the world. She said, maybe in your song you could have a verse about her project, which was uh, helping fund shelters. I said, sure. And maybe you could put a verse in the song about her portion that she's going to be chanting. I said, sure. She said, and, and maybe you could put a verse in there about, about her good friend who was going to be bat mitzvahed with her, but had leukemia, so she couldn't be. I said, yeah, sure. She said, and maybe you could do it in such a way so that no one really knows that's what you're doing, lest we embarrass anybody as you're singing the song. I went, okay. And then she said, maybe you can do it so that our granddaughter feels like She's uplifted by the song. It was a tall order and here's what came. I've been wandering and I don't understand. Stumbling around, blind and thirsty towards some promised land. But I remember once a whispering in my ear. Everything you do from your heart will surely echo here. So I dance and sing that tune. Pour my water on the ground and watch as roses bloom. Did you put more love in the world today? More love on your way to the setting sun. There is only one measure when you can honestly 
honestly say I put more love. Well, I remember when we had to leave our home, middle of the night, running scared, we were so alone. Grateful for the little that we had, cherishing the gifts and the kindness from each helping hand. Over time we came to see It's a simple path that leads to true prosperity Did you put more love in the world today? More love on your way to the setting sun There is only one measure When you can honestly say I put more love Well, today I found a place I could not mend Sitting on the bed, holding hands with a faithful friend Told her that the whole thing shook my faith Wondering aloud if our striving was all a waste She said, we all have one task All that matters is your answer when the question's asked Did you put more love in the world today More love on your way to the setting sun There is only one measure You can honestly say I put more love Oh, Billy. <laughs> but what a beautiful mantra for all of us to, to take away tonight and ask ourselves, are, are we putting more love in the world today? That's so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And I, I think of all of the things that she asked you to put in that song, that one phrase captured it all. Yeah. You know, yeah. a, a man came up to me after a concert once. He said, he said, I'm 50 years old and I've been trying to figure out why I'm on this planet for my entire life. And I heard that song and now I know. <laughs> I went, <laughs> oh. okay, my work is done. Yeah, it was good. And I think- Oh that, my gosh. And I think the work of Kid Finale is putting love in the world one song at a time, one kid at a time. And uh, all the donors that are supporting it, it's, it's, they, they're all putting love in the world. We all have our own way. When I do this song with kids, I just do the chorus. And the verses, I just say to them, okay, how do you put more love? And they say, hugs. And they say, smiles. Are you going to let me talk? Helping. Oh, does someone want to tell us how they put more love in the world? Go ahead. Say it. How do you do it? Go ahead, Essie. You're Silence mute. is good. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that from the movie, The Man on the Moon. Yeah, Andy. <laughs> Silence. Silence. Yeah. So... There's so many ways to put more love in the world. And, and uh, once we come into that, like you were saying, it sort of makes the path clear, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. I got little really tiny drumsticks my sister got me, but I don't know how to use them yet. My mom has to teach me. <laughs> that'll, that'll put more love in the world, I guarantee. That'll put more love in the world. Oh, thank you. I mean, you know, we've been through... I think we've been, we've all been on such a journey and sometimes we just need to hear those affirmations over and over again to help us, you know, just keep walking forward and, and not, not turning our back on, on what's coming. And thank you. I know there, there were a couple of people who said, you know, thank you for the cry today. Thank you for the good, you know, bringing the tears because sometimes that's how we have to cleanse ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, thank you. Wow, folks. Oh my gosh. And the evening has just gotten started. So, oh, what can I say? We're going to swing back up to Chicago. 
Oh my gosh. All right, Mr. Howard. You know what they say, it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. So uh Oh, you're you, right. You <laughs> Well, well. That was that was one of the most uh, heartrending things I've ever heard. So, yeah, I'm well, gonna, I'm gonna try I'm watching it. What are you? I'm gonna try to play something totally different because I. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, somehow got. I'm thinking a lot about Spain lately uh, because uh, from the very young age I was always drawn to things uh, okay I was always drawn to things that were Spanish and uh, whether it was uh, paintings or music and uh, I got to uh, the, the great good fortune of getting to play with Chick Corea a bunch of times uh, because uh, Chick and Bela Fleck had a duo together and so uh, we did a bunch of double bills and we would always jam together at the end of the night and the first tour that we did together um, with the Flectones and Chick, actually with just with a trio with uh, Stanley Clark and Lenny White, we would play Spain at the end of the night. And uh, so that was, uh, I'm gonna eventually play Spain with a, with a track. So uh, hopefully everything's gonna work. I'm just gonna improvise something before I play it. Something Spanish sound.
Lord. Oh. You, you blow my mind. How do you play all those notes so fast? And you know, let's get in the standing ovation. Let him take a bow. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you know, it's it's a lot of breath control. I mean, most people, I think, have have seen or have, you know, um, seen a harmonica and the way it, it's shaped. Tell us a little. I mean, how do you how? I'm just like so amazed. I don't even know how to ask the question. The hardest thing about what I just did is to play like that sitting down. <laughs> that <laughs> me, really, I, I would never normally play fast and aggressively sitting and it was it was a little bit hard at time at moments right now actually to tell you the truth but uh yeah the way the way the harmonic is set up it's uh it's the only wind instrument that uses the breath in both directions because there are two reeds on each hole one of them you blow and the other one you draw so exhale and inhale and you can also play chords it's the only wind instrument that can play chords and you can play rhythms But all the notes aren't on the instrument. And the way that it was designed in Germany in, about the, in the 1820s through the 1850s, they, had, uh, they left out some notes on the bottom. So you could play the one and five chord. And in the middle, they put all the notes of the major scale in. And they kept going until they ran out on the top. So the idea was you could play melodies in the middle like... And if you just put your mouth over it, it gets the one and the five chord, you know, the two most important chords in all of music, for, especially for folk music. And that was the idea. And then what, what ended up happening is when the instrument got to America, blues players realized that if you base your playing on the inhale, it automatically plays all these nice blues chords. So instead of pop goes the weasel, with that same rhythm, if you start on the draw, you go plays a blues shuffle. And then, as if by magic, if you use these note bending techniques, which you change the shape of the inside of your mouth, you get all this. And the Germans who invented it had no idea that these notes were in there. And if, if somebody accidentally got one, they'd think, oh, it's a defect in the instrument. How do we stop them from doing this? And if, you know, they accidentally invert, invented the world's greatest blues instrument. You know, and, and it became like the heart and soul of blues, really, um, all over the world. But then I came along with my inquisitive curiosity. I was 18 years old, and I, I figured out how to bend notes. I thought, that's great. I love it. I want to play the blues. But there's notes that aren't there. How could an instrument not have all the notes? That's crazy. It's an instrument that must have all the notes. I was 18. I didn't know any better. So I figured out how to get the missing notes by bending in the opposite direction on the bottom of the harmonica. Because on the bottom, you bend the draws. And on the top, you bend the blows. So I thought, what happens if I bend the blows on the bottom? I get those missing notes. So now. complete three octave chromatic scale. And then it was just up to me to see how serious I was going to be with it and to take it into the worlds of jazz and uh, Middle Eastern music and classical music and all that other stuff. So that's it in a nutshell. That's what's here. This wow. um, instrument has so much hidden in it and it's invisible. That's the kicker is that you, nobody who plays it can see what they're doing. So you have to have some of a lot of mental visualization in order to to really come up with these concepts. And I, I, like I said, I see it as a piano. That's when my eyes are closed, that's what I'm looking at in my head. Wow. I don't know, you're a genius, Howard. I, I mean, just the, your curiosity and how you just, you figured all that out. And, and, and just this, this instrument and wow. I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of speechless. The miraculous. Now everyone's saying, you know, it's just everyone can everyone can find a harmonica and and begin to experience that. 
and I teach. <laughs> I have an online harmonica school okay. if anyone's interested. Yeah, just look it up. All, All right, there you, know. you go. You should put it up in chat. Put it up in chat. I think, you know. Yeah. You it, might, you might first it just now. now. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'll have, my computer's kind of far wow. from me, but I'll try to put it up there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's a joy. You to see, play. folks, I mean, it is it is amazing. And thank you so much for sharing that, Howard, because I think um, what is so fun for all of us that are just sitting here in the in the zoom room is we learn so much the stories that you share um and that billy share and it it just really helps broaden our perspective and our understanding that really was amazing, amazing. <laughs> thank you my dear oh, yeah. thank Coming you from Essie. Right. you got a new fan howard there you go there you go so I want to take a moment and just say thank you to Dan and Daryl and Karen and Linda and Howard and Barry and uh, Garrett and Margaret Evans and also um, a very dear friend of ours. Oh my gosh, my list just kind of went scrolling. Gail, thank you so much for your donations. We are, we are so appreciative and so humbled um, by your gifts and we hope that as the concert series continues uh, and the concert this evening, that those of you who are still enjoying will uh, make a donation and give generously. I want to say hi to Justin Roth. Hey, Justin. That yeah. was just amazing. Look oh, at that. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, it is amazing. And I just wanted to say one thing about uh, 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 the donations tonight. All of the donations are going to be doubled by our uh, board of directors. So everything that's uh, uh, donated uh, through uh, May 4th, which is Tuesday, uh, will be doubled by our very, 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 very generous board of directors. Fantastic, Paul. That's fantastic. So let's uh, so get up here. Uh, uh, Cheryl and I started something uh, a little while back where we were playing, uh, we would, uh, each concert, we would play a brand new song that we had just written with the kids. And uh, it was really fun because, you know, we just finished those songs. Well, here's one that just got out of the oven on Friday. And Justin, <laughs> was, uh, uh, Justin was assisting me uh, on it. And a song we wrote with kids down in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, at, a, at a school called Dunbar Middle School. Uh, wonderful, wonderful song. And I'd like to introduce you to... Justin Roth, who uh, works with us at Kid Pan Alley, is a wonderful singer, songwriter, uh, recording engineer, and we just totally love him. All right. Well, thank you. My pleasure to be here, as always, and uh, it's an honor and so fun to be able to have a, the opportunity to share a song that's two days old. And uh, I know, Ryan, this will be like the sound check on the fly. Sounding good? Okay. All right. We'll go with that then. So these were sixth and seventh graders, um, and uh, we had two days with them, and they came up with this song. Uh, it's called Summertime When Life Floats By. Summertime when life floats by and I get to go outside. When the birds sing and the bees fly And the stars light up the southern sky That's when I go on a quest and search for something new New memories and the freedom to Do what I want to do Now when the days are long and the clouds roll by And I remember when I was trapped in my own mind Back when I was stuck in school With all the homework and those rules That made me long for Summertime when life floats by And I get to go outside When the birds sing and the bees fly And the stars light up the southern sky That's when I go on a quest and search for something new New memories and the freedom to Do what I want to do now, now I dream about fishing 
at the lake when I can wake up early and stay out late in the woods and at the shore when we've got more time to explore and now I'm longing for summertime when life floats by and I get to go outside when the birds sing and the bees fly and the stars light up the southern sky that's when I go on a quest and search for something new the memories and the freedom to do what I want to do it's been a long year of hibernation and now that I've got my vaccination, I'm ready for celebration of summertime when life floats by and I get to go outside when the birds sing and the bees fly and the stars light up the southern sky that's when I go on a quest and search for something new New memories and the freedom to do what I want to do. I want to do what I want to do in summertime. In summertime, when life floats by. It's coming. That wow. was awesome. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> That's just an example of what kids can do. And Justin, you you and Paul just really brought it out in them. That was that was just amazing. Oh well, they 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 bring so much out themselves. It's just a, a wonder to watch and be a part of and to, to see it all happen. Yeah, we can all learn a lot from that, right? Just to let loose and tell your story. Yeah, indeed. Um, I want to just say we got we got some other great contributions in just recently. Dan Zucker, thank you. Storm, thank you. Storm's a, always contributing. And Anonymous, thank you, Anonymous, for your great contribution. Uh, and thank you all for being here. And um, please, if you can, go to the Give Local Piedmont link and help support uh, Kid Pan Alley so we can write more songs like Summertime. Uh, kids are uh, eager and anxious to keep on keep that creativity going and the ability to connect with each other through music so Justin thank you that was awesome as always so welcome you're so welcome My pleasure. that was amazing yes. all right all right Essie well, we'll, that's great we'll let Justin uh, Justin's out in Fort Collins uh, which is one of the great things about uh, working virtually that uh, Justin can help me when we're in Lynchburg. We can work together out in Colorado uh, or up in New Hampshire. Who knows? So uh, it, there's been some real gift <laughs> that we're able to work during this particular time. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you. We'll let you get back uh, uh, to your dinner party and say hi to Bryce for me. That was, like, that was super cool. Oh, she, she muted. I, I keep waiting for a commentary because Essie is sort of like, you know, she gives us, give us that level, that bar of where we're at for the evening. So let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Billy, what have you got for us? Well, let's see. Um, we've got... Uh, oh, I, Billy, I think... we can't see you. You can't see me? I think so. No, you're in I the dark. Bit. Oh, not quite. You we sure? could we could hear you though. You can hear me and you can see me. So the camera has decided not to work. Let's see if we toggle it. Oh, that beeping must have been the camera thinking I didn't need it anymore. How about now? Oh, no. There we go. There you are. <laughs> I heard that beeping. I didn't know what it was. All right. So the camera thinks an hour is all okay. Good. So you can see me again. I think we're gonna do a uh, a scary song. Ooh. Uh, well, maybe not. Oh. It might be really scary without a sense. Yeah. Scary. It'll be scary in the dark. Yeah. 
you know, usually these things are a sign from God, but I don't know what the sign is. Let's see. Um, we got, we're turning it on. So we're going to just switch to old-fashioned camera. Try this. Oh, no, that's the microphone. Come there. Now we go to video. All right, somebody else? Well, let's see. Facebook. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what? Um, why don't we, we'll come back to you. Howard, do you mind stepping stepping into this slot? And are would you help us out here? Yes, here I am. I, I got scared. Oh, I thank you. Back. You know, I, I, I know it's, uh, it's kind of scary there. <laughs> I could provide the soundtrack too, you know, so, uh, oh, God. let's see. What am I up to now? Oh, gee, I have all sorts of stuff I plan to do, but how about if I sing one? Because uh, I don't think I, I, think I, I, I don't think I've ever sung this one uh, with you guys. Uh, my song about Buddy Bolden. Did I do it last time? No, I don't think you did. I don't good, think so. Good. I don't want to be did. like one trick pony, you know, because I, I do know more than one. Part. You're in a lot of danger of that, Howard. You know. Uh, well, as a singer, that's another story. Um, so, this is a song with an introduction. It's about a legendary trumpet player. They say he was the first jazz trumpeter. Back in New Orleans in the, the 1890s and the 1900s, he was the king. His name was Buddy Bolden. They said that he was the most powerful trumpet player. He could stand at one side of the city and blow his horn, and you'd hear him from miles around. He called it Calling My Children Home. But sometimes when you're the king, you know, the, the crown doesn't sit easy, easily on your head. All sorts of people tried to dethrone the king, and there's a lot of pressure. Buddy started to drink more and more. And finally, he stopped showing up for gigs. And he was the king. He had sometimes three or four in a night. And he wasn't showing up. And, People checked him out and they discovered that he had really gone crazy and lost his mind. And he was committed to an asylum for the insane in Jackson, Louisiana, where he lived out the last 20 years of his life, wandering the halls, playing his trumpet to the air, dressed in those white mental patient robes. It's a very sad story and because what makes a jazz musician a legend is that if you haven't heard recordings and everyone wonders, what did Buddy Bolden sound like? And we'll never know. So, here's my song. Hey, Buddy Bolden, I heard you play In my dreams of yesterday Taking your trumpet to the street, leading the band with your swinging beat. But now you wander like a ghost, far from those places that you love the most. You're the king of the trumpet without your crown, gone and forgotten in your own hometown. And that's why. I'm playing these blues for you. Nobody here will ever know the sounds that came from your home. The way you made the dance hall swing and made the ladies shake their thing. Oh, Mr. Boulder, we'll never know just how. So let the tuba player play it now. for a little while in your memory. And the clarinet
clarinet player. Play a little filigree. It's like those wrought iron railings down on Broadway Street. No jazz band. Play at your funeral. They buried you in a pauper's grave. Nobody knows where your body lays. And it's a mystery to this very day. instruments playing and i just i mean we're just there right there with it wow thank you yeah that's uh, that's actually from my uh, my audio book that i put out uh, and there's a vocal album that goes along with it uh songs i wrote over a span of 45 years that i wasn't never brave enough to sing or i uh, wasn't crazy enough to try to sing so uh <laughs> I, when i put out the audio book i realized oh geez you know poems that's easy stories i can read those but... I have to sing. To Amazing. Our... Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. So uh, I sang 12 songs and uh, made the recording. And uh, it's always uh, it's always a trip to do that one. I love your voice, Howard. I mean, you've really got that. Sh it's kind of this showman, uh, showman-esque. That was just too amazing. I couldn't even stand on it. It was just so amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take you. She said it all. I'll take you. Yes, he said it all. It's like I need someone to tell me this all the time. <laughs> Not just Ezzy. You could just call me Esmeralda. Or Great Esmeralda commentary. Or Esmeralda. Okay. 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 Well, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, oh it, my it, gosh, that was wonderful. Yeah, Buddy Bolden. You know, it's 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 one of those mythological stories, and uh, I wrote the song uh, as an instrumental actually uh, about twenty five years ago. And I don't just have one name. I have. I started writing words for it, but never really finished it until I was ready to put out uh, my book. And then I, I realized, you know, I, I should really finish this thing. And I wrote all the lyrics and uh, put it out in time, it, you know, with the book. And, uh, so it's it's one of those, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tragic story, and but it's also very mysterious. Oh, very. Yeah. Very and 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 you know what? Now that we we've got Billy back in in picture here, we can continue with that mysteriousness as we as we. Hey, Billy, we're so glad you're back with us, man. Well, we well, thought maybe it was going to be in the dark. Well, in the dark would work for this song. It's a scary song, and Howard set the scene, set the mood perfectly. Exactly. This is also a true story. And um, kids, if you're out there listening, I know you are. Um, it's a scary so story and it's true, but it has a happy ending. So you can look at your grown up and say, don't freak out. And I see that I'm a little pixelated on the screen, but the sound, is the sound okay? Sounds good. Yeah, this is my computer laptop. I'll stay camera. Rod, but this is a real. 
Yeah. True story. Billy, I think you're a little bit frozen on me. Yeah, I think you're frozen on me. Um. Yeah, Billy, it's it's not uh, working. You might need to restart or something. Uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, or do you want to try it one more time and see? But you were pretty, you were frozen, and the and the sound was also. Okay, well, I think uh, I think I'll go ahead and do one then. Um, well, Billy, uh, well, Howard inspired me uh, since he sang. I guess I need to also, and I will tell you this story about Howard. And I have a million stories about Howard because we've known each other for over forty years now. But uh, back in the late eighties, uh, well, I, I'd helped start this Augusta workshop in Elkins, West Virginia. And Howard, uh, we got Howard to come teach harmonica and other music things. And uh, my late wife, Julie, and I were teaching uh, performance and songwriting there. And we got Howard to come into our class and talk to everybody about uh, his music. And he sang a song and he was like totally, uh, well, what was so amazing about it is he was, he, he was afraid to do it. He was afraid to sing. And he did it, and it gave everybody else in the class license to do things that they didn't quite know how to do. And that was one of the lessons I've ever had about, uh, you know, what we really, our purpose here is to encourage other people. And uh, you do that sometimes by doing things you don't know how to do, and then other times you amaze them. Uh, so I'm going to sing a song, and I mentioned Julie, and this is a song. I wrote a series of songs after my late wife Julie passed away, uh, and this is one of them. It's called There Used to Be Roses. Um, and I know my Julie's best friend Shirley is out there in the audience uh, tonight, and so I'm going to send this one out to Shirley also. to be roses in this garden there used to be lilies on the path we used to walk now they're just old memories overrun with weeds and brambles where there used to be roses Way back then, picking berries, you and I were young and carefree, tall grasses, sunlight dancing. We ran like children till we fell down laughing. So long ago There used to be roses In this garden There used to be lilies On the path we used to walk Now they're just old memories Overrun with weeds and brambles Where there used to be roses Clearing out that dusty attic Yellowed letters And your blue jacket It's 
but an echo of the joy and sorrow. We loved each other like there was no tomorrow. So long ago, there used to be roses in this garden. There used to be lilies on the path we used to walk. Now they're just old memories overrun with weeds and brambles. Where there used to be roses, there used to be roses, there used to be roses. Gotta clear out those weeds and brambles Place your photo where there used to be roses That's beautiful, Paul. Wow, Paul. That was just was gorgeous. So Thank you so much. I um, that's that that really touched all of us, and we are so grateful to you for sharing that with us. And it's an example of how much you put yourself out there when you're writing with the children, and uh, it, uh, it it makes a big difference when you put your heart. In and I wanted to say. Uh, uh, so Julie finished writing, Julie was a Obie award-winning playwright, actress, and director. And she finished uh, her last play about a week before she passed. Uh, and Howard did a soundtrack for it, which we played at her memorial. Her memorial, her memorial, her memorial. And uh, I've just... Oh, Paul, you got muted. That was just a super... Uh, how much was I muted on that one, Ryan? Just for a second. Oh, okay. Uh, I wanted to announce that the Firehouse Theater in Richmond, Virginia is going to produce uh, Julie's last play uh, this coming year, and I'm really excited about that. It's a play she wrote about her relationship with her teacher in India and uh, about her life in India. Because... Amazing. So anyway, back Thanks. to that. I want to, um, just before we... we um move on. Thank you again, Paul. I want to do some shout outs to some more contributions that came in. Thank you so much. Um, Mary Radford, thank you. Um, Dale and Dick Conti and um, Jonathan Adelstein. Wow, thank you so much for your generous contribution. And I know, um, Howard, I don't know if you remember Jonathan, but he took lessons from you. And you guys uh, actually performed together one time, I think over at the FCC when Jonathan was a commissioner there but he was uh, so excited to to see this show oh so, yeah the name is familiar yeah 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 so thanks everyone yeah. and um it's just amazing so yeah, let's uh, i don't know if we're gonna go try to no, try okay. go back to billy again yes so um i'm just gonna check one thing can you hear my sound because my ipad totally froze <laughs> so you sound yeah. great technology yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Billy, come back to us. Okay, you know what it was? Uh, that was a rhetorical question. My daughter was going to bed, so my wife put on music to help her go to sleep, and it was taking all the bandwidth from our internet. It can happen. It can happen. Well, we're glad you're back. Is your daughter asleep, though? No, she's wide awake. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> music was to help her go to sleep. She's six years old. Oh, my Lord. All right. So, Paul, it's all a sign from God. It's always a sign. From, and, um, and it means it's time to do I Think I Blinked. And this was a song that was written by the kids uh, with Paul in Kid Pan Alley. And um, I had the privilege of singing it on one of his uh, recordings, even though I had nothing to do with the writing of this. This was Paul and his students. But I wanted to say one thing about this song. Uh, we uh, we wrote it with kids. It was the first time we uh, did a residency at uh, 
uh, Patrick Henry School of Science and Art in Richmond, Virginia. And in fact, the school had just started. And we got there, and this was, this was about eight, eight or nine years ago. And uh, one of the kids in the class, I think they were fourth graders, had just found out the night before that he was adopted. And so the class was having this really deep discussion about what that was like, and it was such an emotional time. And so we wrote this song uh, called I Think I Blinked. And it's really an example of how, you know, you can write a song with kids that can deal with what they're dealing with, and it's a way of then healing through it. Uh, it's quite an amazing song. Well, thanks for doing it on the record, Billy, and thank you for uh, doing it tonight. I love this yeah. song. All right, let's see what we can do here. I think I blinked the day I learned the truth I think I blinked when I found out what I always knew The night you came into my room and sat upon my bed It took a lot of courage to say the things you said You said I'm not the mom you thought I was, not the one you were born to but I'm the one who took you in. I'm the one who's always been here and there for you. I think I blinked the day I learned the truth. I think I blinked when I found out what I always knew. The night you came into my room and sat upon my bed. It took a lot of courage to say the words you said You said I waited for the perfect time But perfect never comes I hope that you're not mad at me But no, my love is right on key Cause you and I are one I think I blinked the day I learned the truth I think I blinked when I found out what I always knew the night you came into my room and sat upon my bed It took a lot of courage to say the words I said I said I've known it all along That's why I wrote this song I've seen the pictures on the wall I knew I didn't look like you at all I think I blinked the day I learned the truth I think I blinked when I found out what I always knew The night you came into my room and sat upon my bed It took a lot of courage to say the words we said I think I blinked the day I learned the truth I think I blinked the day I learned the truth I think I blinked the day I learned the truth. I think I blinked. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Billy. Uh, beautiful. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful song. It's a privilege to have gotten to sing it. It moves me. You know, so many of these Kid Pen Alley songs, they, they just move me, you know. It's, it's amazing what they come up with, what you and they come up with. Well, I've been very blessed at uh, this stage of my life and career to get to spend most of my time uh, writing songs with kids and, uh, because they don't run out of ideas. They have such uh, uh, fertile minds and uh, it keeps me feeling young, or younger anyway. At, the, at this particular point. So uh, thanks for doing that. Mm. And uh, love to, let's have, a, let's have you and Howard each do another song. We'll have Howard do one and then you can close us out. Uh, I did want to announce also that uh, uh, everyone who donates during our Give Local Piedmont uh, uh, campaign is gonna be in a raffle and we're gonna give away a, uh, a songwriting session with me uh, and Cheryl. 
And so we're going to write a song. You can have your family and we'll write a song with you and your family or you and a group of friends uh, that will be your own song. So uh, everybody who donates, uh, you have a good chance of winning that. So uh, please uh, uh, go and help us uh, work with more children. We've worked with actually almost 70,000 children now and uh, help us reach 10,000 more. So Howard. Yes, Paul. Well, I'm uh, I'm very uh, happy to be here, and uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone tonight. My internet is unstable where I'm at. I think Oops. videos of the baby <laughs> possible. Okay. So I'm going to bid you all good night before I totally lose you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Cheryl. Bye, Cheryl. Thanks, Cheryl. Well, it's great to be sitting here. I feel like I'm in Little Washington almost, and uh, I have very, you know, so many great memories of uh, all the years I've known you, Paul, and played with Trapezoid and A Thousand Questions. And I have to really, even though I'm not wearing a hat, to take off my hats off to you for coming up with the idea for Kid Pan Alley. It's a really remarkable idea. Nobody ever thought of anything like that before. And the fact that you've been able to continue it during this pandemic year and actually have it thrive. Uh, it's really a testament to its innate value, innate worth, and uh, the creativity, the inbr inborn creativity of children. And uh, it's, it's, it's there all the time. I mean, you know, we remember how school used to feel. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the highlight of the school day is when you get to do something that's not academic. You know, play, a, play some sports, be in a play, sing, you know, joyful human activities. And so you've tapped into this thing in a, in a major way. And there's the evidence, you know, those beautiful recordings that you have that all the children and their parents and their teachers can listen to and be proud of. And it, it just generates so much good things in the world. So I'm happy to have been a small part of it on a few of those recordings. Oh, you've been on a, on a bunch of them and uh, you took them to a whole other place. So thank you for that, Howard. Well, maybe in a few years I can sing one of the songs. Paul's going, whoa, not so fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you on one of the, singing on one of the records, Howard? Okay, okay, okay. You get your pitch correction software out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing about the harmonica that's very dangerous is that it's the only instrument I know that you can easily pick up upside down without realizing it, which is what I just did. I was getting ready to play something really soulful, and it would have sounded like this. Oop, you know, a little mouse just squeaked. So I think I'm going to try to play a song about an animal. And uh, this is a very, very beautiful melody, and I hope I don't desecrate it. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's because I have to accompany myself, so I have to really think hard. It's uh, The Swan by Sanson from his uh, Carnival of the Animals, which was written for children. That's one of the reasons I thought about playing it. And I do it my way, as Frank would say. So uh, hope you enjoy it.
Holy moly. Oh. Did that really happen? Uh, I had a few sticky reads. I'm sorry <laughs> for that. Oh but yes, it did happen. Yes. Yeah. Wow, Howard. That, that was truly, truly amazing. Thank oh, you so glad much. You it. Glad you enjoyed it. It's been such a joy to have you here tonight. I, I, uh, I feel so fortunate. Um, I think we're going to end, Paul, right with Billy, right? Is that, is that the yes. plan? And what, so what we'll do is Billy will play a song, and then uh, uh, there's a few short announcements uh, that I will make, and then uh, we're going to hang out for five or ten minutes. If you all would like to stay online with us, we're going to turn off the, uh, the simulcast to uh, YouTube and Facebook, and we're just going to have an opportunity for you all to thank uh, Howard and Billy and to talk and ask questions. If you have anything that's on your mind, uh, you are in the presence of some real musical geniuses and uh, uh, I, every time I get around Howard I learn so much about music uh, because uh, Howard lives and breathes music uh, and some of the rest of us just uh, uh, stick our toes in but Howard's the, the real deal there so uh, please hang out with us uh, afterwards and uh, I uh, just wanted to make one quick announcement our friends at In Your Ear Studio in Richmond uh, do a do a concert uh, every Tuesday night at 7.30. And it's a beautiful, beautiful studio and they have set the bar very high for uh, uh, live shows uh, with the tech thing. So they're having Mekong Express this coming, uh, this coming uh, Tuesday. Okay. And I just want to uh, give a shout out to Jackson Gilman who um, just gave a donation. And to remind everyone, uh, our Give Local Piedmont fundraiser does go through Tuesday, May 4th, and everyone's donations will be matched by our amazing board of directors, Kid Pan Alley Board of Directors, who are so generous. Um, we can't thank you enough for being here tonight and supporting our continued work with the kids, and um, to Howard and to Billy for being here to uh, to make this evening truly, truly special. And another thanks again to to Ryan and Ashley for your help in making this concert possible. So with that, Howard, I'm still reeling from that last piece. That was truly amazing. Um, and now on to the amazing Billy Jonas. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so this is a participatory song because this event is participatory. People are making donations. People are are singing along, people are learning about the collaborative process. Kid Pen Alley is, is a catalyst for, for participation and creation and co-creation. So I'd like you all to be part of this right now. Just as I was the first time I heard Howard Levy. I was uh, probably fifth, no, I was about 20 years old and it was when I, I'm in North Carolina right now. We didn't say that I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, but I was born in Hyde Park and Howard came to our, our synagogue, Road Faith Zedek, and he played the piano and a paper cup at the same time. And I went, all right, I'm in. So we're going to all find paper cups. We're going to find tabletops. We're going to find pots and pans, whatever you've got. The bow diddly rhythm has five beats. Try that rhythm with a snap of the fingers. Try that rhythm with a clap of the hand. Bow diddly rhythm on the skin of your cheek. On the sleeve of your shirt and the bottom of your shoe, go deliver them. Now, something metal, maybe your keys. Go deliver them on the metal again. You can use some silverware, try the air. You can play anything, including your mind, but we'll leave that for another discussion. Maybe in the after party, we'll talk about how you play your mind. Before we sing the song, do not unmute yourself, but tell me this out loud at the computer. Where does wood come from? Yeah, trees. And the trees come from little seeds. The seeds grow out of the ground. Duh. Put a big D on the end because it's obvious. The ground. Duh. Yeah. And where does metal come from? Rocks. And the rocks come out of the ground. Duh. And where does plastic come from? Oil. And the oil comes out of the ground. Which lives in a house 
bat spinning round and round. If you get dizzy, get out into the sun. Bang on the door of a house where your house comes from. Some houses, some houses. Houses are made of wood. Bang on the table, that sounds good. I live in a wood kalimba. Bodhi the rhythm like a big marimba. It came from a tree, which came from a seed, which grew out of the ground, which lives in a house that's spinning round and round. You get busy. To the sun, bang on the door of a house where your house comes from. Some houses, here we go. Some houses, some houses, some houses. Some houses are made of plastic. Bottom of your shoes sounds fantastic. I live in a styrene dome. Bottom of your shoe, bow diddly rhythm, go. It came from plastic, which came from oil, which came out of the ground, which lives in a house that's spinning round and round. If you get dizzy, get out into the sun, bang on the door of the house where your house comes from. Some houses, go some houses. Some houses are made of metal. Play the keys, they sound incredible. I live in a big tin can. Play that metal like a heavy metal band. It came from metal, which came from rocks, which came out of the ground, which lives in a house that's spinning round and round. Get dizzy, get out into the sun, bang on the door of the house where your house comes from. Some houses, go, oh, some houses, some houses, some houses. Now some houses are made of flesh. Play your cheeks and speak gibberish. Bugga long, bugga wong, bugga lugga bong bong. I live in a house of skin. Squeeze yourself like an accordion. Doop, 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 doop. You came from your body, which came from. You came from your body, which came from. Your parents. Who came from. Their parents. Who came from. Yeah, their parents. Who came from. 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 I guarantee if we could hear you, we do not have consensus. Somebody probably said God, someone said aliens, someone said monkeys, someone said Schomburg, and somebody said stuff we're not allowed to say in a public space on the internet. So guess what? Since it's a public fundraiser, all your answers are correct, and they all come back to the same thing. The grown-ups in the room will explain why later. Ground, which lives in a house that's spinning round and round. You get dizzy, get out into the sun. Bang on the door of a house where your house comes from. Some houses go Billy. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Billy. Thank you, Howard. I am uh, so honored and grateful to have both of you as uh, my dear friends. And uh, Howard, thank you for uh, making 
several dozen records uh, sound so much better over the years. Uh, Howard's played on most of the records we've made since we met. Uh, and of course, he's been on the records of very, 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 very many famous people like Paul Simon and Dolly Parton and Donald Fagan. And uh, he's just one of the most remarkable musicians I've ever met. And Billy, you just make me laugh. You make me cry. Uh, you make me feel so alive with your music. Uh, you're such a creative, uh, wonderful musician and genius in your own right. So thank you both. Thank you all for uh, being part of our fundraiser. Uh, here tonight. Please uh, hang out. I've got about 30 seconds of credits to roll and then come hang out with us. And uh, uh, if you have any questions for Billy or, or Howard or any of us, uh, we'd be happy to talk with you. And Essie, we want we might have some questions for you because I saw you were playing the drums there, Essie. Okay. So uh, anyway, here are the end credits and thank you all again. Hey. Thank you. Maybe by next year I'll be able to see your smile I'll be able to see your frown Maybe by then the world won't be turned upside down Maybe we'll have a party Maybe things will be just fine Maybe we can have it all If we just make it through this time Maybe if we just imagine We can laugh about this year Be grateful for what we've got Maybe our life will be better Maybe 